So uh, in this video, I'm going to be installing an automatic solar tracker. I'm going to be running it off one 12 volt solar panel, no batteries, uh, a quick manual review where you can, you can pause it and actually read the details on how to install and adjust uh, your solar trackers. They're about a hundred bucks. Um, this is my beautiful garden and uh, stay tuned. Uh, to get to the part of the video where I go through the manual, if you want to actually read the manual, uh, fast forward to the end of the clip. Uh, and you'll, when you see pages, uh, just pause on the on the reading you want to do. Every single um, detail is I, I highlight for a couple of seconds so you can actually read the manuals that these uh, automatic solar trackers come with. Three years of solar tracking manually with uh, ropes and this rope finally broke. This is my, uh, this was my solar tracker and I pulled it <laughs> with ropes from down below um, up over there. That one I installed a, a, an auto because that one's a bear to climb. This one's a lot more enjoyable. Anyhow, look at all the overgrow. This was all cut clean when I built this platform to put my solar array on and it's, it's all growing back um, but I have my I finally got over the laziness I'm gonna install the uh, automatic uh, solar tracker today I'm getting it done okay I just raised my nail bags with my handy tools uh, you know cordless cordless saws all I'm gonna trim these branches back these are rope to raise and lower things here because I can it's a little tougher in the dug fur, you know, all the limbs in the way. Um, cordless drill. Here is the, here is the, the little laser eye, I call it, because I'm tacky. My actual controller module. And, and the piston. Mounting brackets are in my paquito. And now I shall hook it up. A little view of my much higher Douglas fir uh, tree house. Anyhow, uh, I got some flack on one of my videos because the guy's like, why do you cut the uh, the connectors that come with the solar panel? I forget what they're called. Um, but anyway, something like C4s or something. Uh, they, I've had two, two go bad on me for no reason. They just... Uh, you know, they got hot or whatever it is. They're cheap plastic crap. And I just got in the habit. I clipped this off. And this is a perfect example why. I'm running 48 volts here. I used to run it at 24 volts. So each time you make these changes, now you got to buy more adapters. You know, you, you got to keep buying uh, different adapters. And now I'm hooking up my power lead. I'm going to run off one solar panel. 12 volt is going to drive my... Uh, going to drive my piston motor and so I can't use those connectors you know unless I, ha I manufacture them myself and uh, those are even more likely to fail uh, so I always use wire nuts I already loosened this one but um, I always just clip them off you know those, those connectors off and I wire nut everything and this is the perfect example why uh, uh, now it's 30 seconds to hook up the power uh, to my new automatic solar tracking device okay i trimmed my little power line i mean it runs on milliwatts it doesn't pull anything but it's still 12 volt dc so the shorter the length the more you know less uh, the less wasted current you have so i shortened this up cut about six feet off of it and uh i, I read last night or last time i was was doing this manual uh automatic solar tracker manual review that they say don't run it on your solar panels i have been running that one uh this will be its third summer off one solar panel now if you're if you're familiar with with solar panels and parallel and series so this is one panel set of wires comes down into these these wire nuts one is the positive leg going to the solar charger the other is the negative continuing to the next panel's positive. See, boom, boom, boom. And this is running 48 volts, this series, this bottom row, a series of four panels. 
but I'm only pulling off these two these two lines which is one 12 volt solar panel so despite the fact that the wire is touching the negative side of a string of 48 volts it still can only pull off this one panel and uh, so anyway just so people understand that I'm still only going to be getting 12 volts to this to this power because it's not connecting the other the negative end of this string clear on the other side it's it hasn't multiplied any panels yet it's only running on one anyway just so people know you can do that can you hear it there's no there's no sun today but it's extending I have the eye facing just to test it and even with no light it's working it just it just shut off so it when it gets enough energy it even on a an overcast day like today I mean we have no direct sun oh. <laughs> we have no direct sunlight uh, they still work and if it gets if it gets to a point where it has any doubt it will level off it's going again Sorry about the highway, but see it's already extended out a good six, seven inches. Let's see what happens when I turn the eye around. It'll gather wattage. I'll turn it back on when it's ready to go the other way. I turned off the camera. It's oops, I got my light. <laughs> yeah, if I block my own laser eye. As soon as I turned off the camera, it started going. But anyway, this is with no direct sunlight, and it still gets enough power to turn the... I can't, I don't know if I can hear it anymore. No, it's not running. But anyway, uh, yeah, I got really dark now. Um, but even on these really gloomy overcast days, hooked to one 12 volt solar panel the uh, auto solar tracker still has plenty of power to move your panels around it is dreadfully uncomfortable up here uh, anyhow these are the little brackets that they give you it comes with a little pin and a cotter key you just slip it through the little hole make sure you have it the right way uh, to allow it free movement and the one on the top what I've done is I extended it all the way out so that I can gauge my morning sun because if I go too far you see the panels start to hit that stump over there um, and you know that I'm, I'm really close to the bottom of the deck and for morning light that would that will be my morning so here's where you have to start using your brain and you've got to get this set up in here and in, in such a way that it does not cram your panels into the post that's mounted on or in this case the the treehouse deck um, and uh, and that's why I extended it because I don't want to have to go to the other side I want to set the long side first and then the way you point your little laser eye is critical you don't want to have it backwards you just turn it around if you got it backwards just unscrew the little laser eye and point it the other way uh, so very very simple I'll get I'll film it once I have it mounted and I'm testing it. Okay, I don't have any uh, sunlight, but I'm going to uh, test it. I took a guess on, on where to mount it. God, I can't get far enough without falling off the treehouse to show you. I got, only got one screw in there. Oh, in the process, I was examining those that hinge. Look at that thing. <laughs> Now remember, it's been up here for three, this will be its third summer, so almost three years. Uh, and in the wind storms, and, and look at those hinges have taken a beating. Um, but yeah, they're, they're still there. Uh, anyhow, uh, the solar panels are unaffected. And here we go, I'm gonna flip that little thing around and see if there's enough light to start turning the panel back. Okay, now I gotta sit here and wait. 
Oh, it's already coming. It al it already moved about six inches off that stump over there. See, with no with no sunlight. You hear it? It's it's it shuts off until it gets enough energy to make a run, and then it tries to run again. But there's there's no light. There's no sunlight at all. So yeah, I'll I'll click it back on if we get anything but gloom here. There it goes. There it goes. Can you hear it? Let's see if I got it first guess. And, and this was the, with the panels facing completely away from the sun. It, well, there is no sun, but oh, I got halfway there. Uh, we're, we're about halfway uh, through the, 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 the thrust of the plunger and the panels are about almost level. So it looks good. Um, I might hit here. It's gonna be close. But anyway, even with the panels pointing, pointing completely away from what little light there is, no direct sunlight, it already in like five minutes has bought it this far. You can hear it clicking. It's measuring, you know, it's saving uh, wattage. It's building up a charge to turn that through this little dinky little skinny little wire here. I didn't bring my, I forgot my, uh, plastic wire ties. I gotta go down and get them and, and string everything up. But uh, I'll click it back on when it finishes its throw. I only put one screw up under there because I want to make sure it's right before I, I finalize it. I, I'm crammed underneath here waiting to see if my guess was good. Uh, Look at that, it, it's almost done with its throw. I've got a couple feet of clearance at this angle. Um, of course, because it's such a low platform, when I when I tilt the, sun, the panels more flat for summertime sun, it'll be a little bit a little bit different. I won't have I won't have that low corner. And the, the winter is the toughest with a low platform because that low corner, you know. So really, it's just a matter of, of mathematics, you know, educated guessing in my case. I'm actually really good at that. I usually get it the first shot. But on the other one, 100 feet up, I had to move the, the top of the piston two or three times to get it to full throw, really leaning towards the sunset. Anyhow, so far, so good. I forgot my electric tape. I always tape up these uh, wire nuts um, and I always, make it so they're under the panels they're not out in direct weather uh, so they can't get wet and the same thing with these controllers they uh, they're not waterproof so you got to have them under a panel don't, don't. here it goes oh shoot it's pulling on a rope ah I gotta cut the rope well that was that was fun I forgot I had the uh, you know, I've been pulling it for for years uh, with a rope manually, and I had one of them still attached. You see, now it's gone to the end of its throw. Uh, as soon as I relieved that rope, it <laughs> that seemed to have a lot more energy, you know. And look at the the bottom. I'm still eight inches off off the deck, so I I actually could tilt it more towards the evening sun. But right now it is, what time is it? It's, it's a, about five and there's a big giant tree there. The sun just came out and that's why the, the panel, the, the uh, tracker moved so quickly. Um, the moment the sun came out, it went, you know, and it just went over. Um, I should probably uh, make it come a little bit more. If I move that in, though, then it'll throw that side more, too, towards the morning light. Um, let me think about that and get back to you. Look, I can cut that stump. I bought my Sawzall. And luckily, I had this handy knife to cut my, uh, you know, my old turning rope that I used to turn the solar chakra with. Anyway. 
So, in in all my haste, uh, I thought it was gonna rain, but now the sun has has come out. Uh, I'd made a big well, it's not a mistake because I caught it. Um, but when I told you that when I pivot to the summer axis more flat, you know it won't reach as far. I realized, oh crap, I didn't build the 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 cripple. Here, let me switch the camera views here. Anyhow. Look what would happen. I can't, I'm so, now I'm crammed in here. <laughs> I can't move. Uh, but look what I did. I mounted it to the permanent kicker board, which never moves. And this pivots, you know, north and south. Uh, that's, you can't do that. <laughs> it has to have a kicker board. Oh, like, uh, okay, like this. So, so when, when I pivot that top, this go, this goes down also. When I set this to summer down here, that the solar tracker moves with it. Otherwise, I'm just bound. So let me get that fixed really quick. I need a drill bit. This old this wood is so dry, I won't be able to get a screw through it. Be right back. Uh, for people unfamiliar with my scheme here, I'm now under the treehouse solar array and. This gives you an idea of So I was crammed under that thing up there. Now I'm standing on a little rickety set of old boards and it's like a little bird walk up here. And I'm still a good 40 feet up. Oh, yeah, it's kind of scary. But here it's not swaying so bad, but I'm still at treetop level. I'm on the ground and see what I did? I built a, a little stairs all the way up and then several several platforms three before it goes to the very very tippy top where the I had the you know I picked the skinniest highest branch I mean you know the top strong branch cut it off at the top of the tree and built that platform up there terrifying work And the view from the almost the driveway that's that's tilted into the evening sun the sun's getting ready to go down um, but you see by my surroundings why I had to put my solar panels up high for those of you living in the forest if you don't do this if you don't get them up and open or at least make a big clearing boy solar's tough man it's rough uh, I, I managed to get really good output with only 1,200 watts in panels. So that that's the whole thing about these tree houses. I saved a lot of money, but it was a lot of hard work. Okay, I, I pre-drilled into this dry old lumber here so I, so I don't crack out the batter board. And I'm using these big long uh, Torx uh, deck screws. And um, that's how I did the one up in the high Douglas fir. And it, it's held now for coming on three years through a couple of pretty bad windstorms also. Kind of phenomenal, really. Um, people don't realize it, but the, when the wind blows, it doesn't pull only on one side. So it, it pulls on one side and pushes on the other. And it's, it balances the load somehow. It's not nearly as uh, dreadful as you think it would be, um, especially when they're flat. When they're at an angle like this, it's more dangerous, uh, of course, because it's a giant sail. But even then, it's pulling and pushing on each side in opposite direction. It, it, it's, it's kind of neutralizing itself, you know, or <laughs> balancing itself out. Okay, here I am trapped underneath. I, uh, I have moved it, so I got about five inches of clearance. And it's hitting my safety ropes here. That, that's just like when my kids were climbing up here. Um, you know, there's no reeling. Uh, and anyway, I'm glad I had them here because I, I was leaning against them a little bit when I was remounting this uh, piston here. So, so now the main pivoting where this carriage bolt is, is this uh, solar tracker is attached to the main uh, pivot arm. So the whole thing moves together. Matter of fact, I, I gotta move it anyway, so I can just I can show you. <laughs> One last thing before I oh, 
I can't really do much. I'm pinned now, and I, I can't lean it back to test the morning side. So I'm just gonna trim back. Ouch, that little stump uh, right, right there. I'm gonna trim just a few inches off of it in case the throw's a little bit lower than it was when I tested it earlier. Um, but anyway, you, you hear this clicking periodically? I've got these settings here. Uh, I don't know. If, there we go. Um, I, I can't see so close. I'm old. My eyes don't work very well up close. But anyway, oh, ti uh, interval timing. Okay, I see it. It is this one. You can turn down how often it scans. Uh, hold on. Okay. Okay, that is more. And I think this is less. But I have no way of really, it should stop clicking. It's clicking more maybe. No, let me go all the way. All right. I don't know why it's still clicking. My other one, that, that actually worked, but I, I can't really read it because <laughs> of my eyes. Am I on the right one? Ring speed. Anyway, uh, this is how you adjust how often it seeks and all these different settings right here. Little tiny screwdriver, no problem, man. You can dial it right in if you can see, but I'm pinned. I gotta wait till the morning when it goes the other way. And I'm not like pinned under here. I'm, I'm lying on my back, freaking totally trapped. <sighs> that was nuts. Um, anyway, now I'm on the other side. The sun's getting ready to go down uh, late afternoon and you can see the angle of the solar panels and my little jobber in there. Again, when I went down, I forgot my uh, tie strips. I'm gonna tie all these wires up after I, I know they got enough length. Like, like this one was critical right here to make sure it's long enough, and it is. Of course, I've been using it manually, so I knew they were. But just to make sure, now I'm gonna loosen these uh, screws right here and lower this whole thing. And uh, that's the north-south axis. That's what makes it a dual axis. The north and south is manual. You only set it twice a year, you know, spring and fall. Uh, it, but the east to west, morning and evening, is critical for daily uh, maximized production. You're going to get 30 or 40 percent more power uh, throughout the day, you know, and that's a big deal. I mean, if you have 10 solar panels, in order to get that, you're going to need three or four more solar panels to equal it, or you can just spend $100 on a solar tracker, or you can spend $300 or $400 on solar panels. Your choice. I was leaning out there untying this safety rope, and a big gust of wind kicked up, and that tree actually hit the deck, this pine. <laughs> it was a little spooky because I had my hands out on this limb here, and, it, and I don't know what kind of critter, something has been eating the bark off the tree. Very freaking weird. But anyway, yeah, that was spooky. did it again. I was undoing this, this fastener and the whole thing shook and it came over and slammed into that branch this time. This, this, this pine tree. I want to film it. Oh well. Okay, I, uh, I loosened this to, to show you. It, this is the summer set. It, it's almost flat, but in the winter, I just go, oh God, I, I let it wedge in there trying to pick up the phone. <gasps> okay, there. You see how it, winter, summer, and it always has a little bit of an angle on it. Um, but yeah, that's why it's really important to have your batter board attached to your pivoting mechanism, see? Can you see the solar tracker? I'm gonna do a three quarters. I'm gonna leave it about right here. Um, yeah. Okay, I, I wish, I'm sorry it's so zoomed. I don't really have a choice, but I got it much more towards summer. Um, you know, it, this used to be clear up here. 
and in the winter it goes way up this angle in the summer I drop it way back to more like a 12 degree angle or something I get up close to 45 in the you know uh, degree angle uh, for winter time which is my <laughs> those are the crisis months but anyhow that's how easy it is now I'm going to gather my tools and climb down One last thing uh, you see that this this big gap right here where the carriage bolt on the main pivoting uh, hinge here people are like why don't you tighten these up if you did that if you came through and, and tightened this up when winter comes and the wood tries to expand again you're gonna just split your wood out and pe people don't realize that uh, when it's tight in the wood you know if you build it during winter when the wood is moist or at least green wood uh, summer comes the wood dries out and shrinks if you go and tighten it down when it gets wet again it's gonna balloon out and it's either gonna pull and break your it'll either pull nails break screws break screw heads off or it'll split the wood so it's been dry you know for uh, quite a, well it's always actually really dry but uh, it does get moist it, you know water does drip down in here in here and get things wet and they expand in the winter and then in the summer it looks all sloppy but it's just a pivot hinge it's still holding so tightening that carriage is actually a good way to destroy this beam because it'll just pull right through when the wood tries to expand people that aren't builders uh, need to realize that in the winter wood grows it swells like a sponge in the summer it shrinks i love my trees and regrettably i had to cut some new growth that was coming out on my sun side uh, and I, I trimmed the top of this because I'm not certain uh, if I'm going to take up more room when it swings to the morning tomorrow. <laughs> uh, usually when I elevate it, when I, when I decrease the angle of the north-south axis, everything is higher um, off the ground, you know, there's no low corner. So technically I, I should have more clearance, but I trimmed it just in case. And I'm, I'm trying to encourage growth that isn't on the sun side, like this one's going to lean, you know, in the opposite direction. Because when you're running things in series, one little tiny chunk of shade will destroy all the panels in that series. It, none of those cells will work. You'll, you'll, get, you'll be down to like 20% on the most beautiful day. You block one cell and you're going to be down to 20 or 30% production on every single panel in the series. So yeah, you don't want shade when you're running in series. Ugh. Okay, having... I used uh, the power line to the piston to temporarily for the night tie up some of my wiring. Tomorrow, it's it's like almost dark, the sun's setting. Tomorrow I'll come up with some wire ties and button things up, electrical tape, get that safety rope down, I can use it. But this is, uh, it's clicking, intermittent hasn't changed, uh, but tomorrow I'll dial it in. It's completely, retracted its piston so it won't go any lower which is good because when I tilt it forward uh, this corner in the winter time is going to be way down right on the deck when I tilt the uh, north-south axis on the carriage bolt up there anyhow I didn't spend any money I mean maybe three or four you know 12 foot two by fours and a couple two by sixes the rest is like an old sawhorse and old lumber lying around the place to build the deck uh, and it's three years old <laughs> and it's still you know as rickety as the day I made it and it survived some storm so yeah it's easy um, good luck folks forgot to uh, mention the oh, wow if I back up anymore I'm falling Ugh. but anyway I forgot to mention oh, you see how the laser eye is mounted um, perpendicular with your panels the east is pointing east, and uh, just like that. Stop! And there it is, above my beautiful garden. Man, it's exploding. Uh, now the uh, solar array is so flat, you see the bottom of them instead of the, uh, the phase. Uh, summer. It's summer tracked, you know, north-south axis now is much flatter. 
Wow. Just wow. How'd that happen? Well, this is great. I uh, didn't realize my rope was wrapped around my treehouse and, and look. <laughs> I can't reach my tools. I lowered him with the rope, but it's wrapped around two by six and I either got to climb up or get a ladder. <laughs> I don't want to climb up. Okay, so there's the gist of it uh, lying on the ground. You know, your, your little manual is pretty clear. So this is, this is your controller here. Um, everything is really, really clearly marked. It doesn't come with a, a temperature, you know, uh, 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 oops, wrong, wrong side. Sorry. There, like this limiter, that's a special use for people with, you know, uh, solar tracking issues. Um, the anemometer there doesn't come with it, but Here's your, your power output to the actual piston. This is what turns your array. It did not come with this little power cord that I'm, I'm installing. It's 12 to 24 volt. Um, I had to use some, some old speaker wire. And uh, here's where your, your light sensor, come on, focus. It won't focus. There we go. Oh, I don't know why it's doing that. Anyway, three little wires on the actual cable. It tells you what is north, I mean, uh, east and west, and then your, your common ground. And that is your, your little laser eye, I call them. But it's just a little solar panel on each side. Whenever the sun hits one more than the other, it goes it turns the piston you know it activates the piston to to tilt your array very very simple now a quick uh manual review so basically there's just two wires hooked up here hard to go wrong <laughs> three wires to hook up here and then your dc input i mean they're very very simple manual review now just if you're curious read it for yourself just pause I'll try to get it to focus in the, to where you can pause. Focus. I have a GoPro coming, but it's not here yet. Oh, I forgot to show you the remote. Hold on a second here. It also comes with this, this little remote. Useless to me because it, you know, alleges a 30 foot range and my uh, solar arrays are like 70 and, and 90 feet up in trees. So it's totally useless. It runs on triple A's. But when you get it hooked up, you know, you can set it for manual and then test your you know, north-south access and dial it, dial in the, uh, the amount of throw. Okay. Useless to me though. And that's it. 
So all the information you get, I have never had an issue. Mine is going on its third summer now. Uh, just getting ready to start summer. Um, I've never taken it down. It, I run it off one solar panel. This manual says you cannot run it directly off solar panel. But I run 12 volt, 100 watt panels, and one panel is perfect. And like I said, I'm going on the third year, and there's no never been an issue. It always just works. So I disagree with them. You can uh, go directly off your panel. Uh, if you get a moment, uh, please like and subscribe this channel. Uh, that's how you spell my name. Click on videos to view all 40 of my videos so that uh, the Google algorithms uh, starts helping everybody uh, learn how easy it is to produce your own energy. Thanks.